Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I am, uh, well, let's see. I will get you kind of caught up on where I'm at. Uh, you saw me build the stab. You saw me build the uh, uh, elevator. And uh, what I've done since then is I added um, this piece of uh, eighth inch material that goes on the uh, top side. And then on the bottom side, you can see the eighth inch material actually runs all the way back to here. And uh, as you probably saw before, there's another piece of eighth inch underneath there to receive that. So this is the bottom and top, so it's sitting and oriented correctly. I came in and um, I went ahead and uh, hinged this. As you can see, my uh, hinges are in place now, and this process, this process, it's actually exactly as you saw me do on the uh, rudder. So if you're um, if you're new here and you haven't seen that yet, I will put a link here to that video so you can see the process by which I did this, and I did it exactly the same. Um, just made made my. Uh, indication of how the 060, uh, uh, the 60 thousandths thick for the hinges. Um, I made that line in the location where it goes and then I just uh, did my uh, flush cutter uh, on one side and then I moved my board and did the flush cutter on the other side. But I'll show you the video and you'll, you'll be able to follow that um, pretty easily. It's just exactly the same. Um, so what, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got a drill I got to drill this hole through to the bottom um, and then I've got to come on the bottom and drill that hole through to the top um, and then I'll be able to uh, mount the stabilizer and what I'm gonna work on is I've got to make four of these brackets right here um, I've got the channel over there to make those and once I get these four brackets made We've got the tubing um, ready to go and so we'll get the brackets located where they're supposed to be and then we can cut the tubing to fit in the bracket and then drill through the tubing and get that whole um, thing going we'll get the vertical stab um, sort of indexed to the horizontal stab where it needs to be so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the just take the rudder off for now, or take the elevator off for now. Then we'll just grab the vertical stab here, and we will um, we'll be able to get to work on getting those uh, tubes and brackets made. So I'm going to get uh, a couple things uh, set up. Uh, let's see. Uh, last weekend, um, I took my let's see must have been my eighth and ninth hour of uh, tailwheel training and I have to say it was the best uh, it was the best day I've had so far and and there's some things I learned here that I, I decided I want to share with um, with you guys and what was interesting is um, in the morning uh, what I typically do since it's an hour and a half away is um, is I uh, I take a flight in the morning and then I go have lunch at the restaurant right there at the airport and then I take a second flight in the afternoon typically the uh, sea breeze kicks up in the afternoon and it's a little bit of a crosswind and so the afternoons have always been a whole lot more challenging than um, the morning um, more challenging because it's all challenging and uh, but what I noticed this time around is, uh, and if you're if you're currently in flight training, um, maybe you can relate to this, and and this may this thought may be helpful for you if you um, if you haven't uh, experienced this before. But what's interesting is there's so much to learn about flying a tailwheel airplane that for those first seven hours, six and a half hours. Uh, because this, this epiphany sort of happened in the seventh hour, um, you, you get to a point where you're getting constant instruction. 
So you actually, uh, you actually find yourself getting into a mode of waiting for instruction. And we were, we were doing an exercise where I would come in and land three point and then I would start to take off again and I would get up on the mains and then the instructor would throttle me back and I would fly down the whole length of the runway. We were at a different airport where there's a nice long runway. We'd fly down the whole length of the runway and I would keep everything steady, just riding on the mains and staying on center line, fighting a slight crosswind and some gusts <laughs> for the whole length. It's a serious workout, trust me. Um, but what I, at one point in that flight, the plane, I got, I was fully to the left of center line and my right uh, wing tip was starting to rise. And my instructor goes, do you see that? And uh, I said, yeah, I see it. And he goes, then fix it. And it was, a, it was at that moment after we got squared away and got back up in the air it dawned on me that I'm waiting for him to tell me what to do, even though instinctively by this point, six and a half hours, I'm, I, I know, I see it, I identify it, and, and I know how to fix it, but for some reason I was just waiting to be told to fix it. So that was the flight before the last two that I took, and I have to tell you it made absolutely all of the difference in the world um, because I landed that day and, I, and the conversation that I had with my instructor is, I said, the epiphany that I had during that flight is, hey, I'm in the front seat, I'm pilot in command, and I need to fly the airplane that way. Like, like you're my passenger, and I'm the one who's in control here. And it, uh, uh, it was quite a flip in my, in my brain, and I had an awesome two flights, the afternoon flights, which have really challenged me. Um, I just... I managed everything like really well, you know, put, put in like 22 landings all day, um, which was phenomenal. And this Saturday I actually start my, uh, my wheel landings. So that'll be a whole new barrel of challenges, but everything builds, right? So everything that I've been doing and everything he's been putting me through, there was one other exercise I wanted to tell you about that I found really interesting was we actually made, um, some 360 degree turns where he told me to take my hand off this, the stick altogether and I could only make that turn using my rudders and the elevator trim um, to keep the nose up. And so I made a couple turns that way and then I made a turn, made some turns using aileron only and then using the uh, elevator trim to um, keep the plane where it needed to be with my feet off the rudders. And uh, there's so many things like that that you do learning to fly a tailwheel that, well, seriously, I've walked away going, you know, I don't know what I have, um, 300 hours, 270 hours. I'll have to look and see how many hours I actually have flying Cessnas and uh, Warriors and all types of, uh, you know, 182, 150, 172. And, um, and these, um, and that doesn't even count any of my Minimax time before that I didn't actually, uh, I didn't log in my normal, my normal logbook. But that, uh, I feel like I really didn't understand how to fly the airplane until I went through this, until um, I started going through this training process. So anyway. Uh, I just wanted to share that with you. I don't, I don't, it, I know it doesn't apply to anything I'm doing today. And, um, hopefully if, you know, if you just came here to see me build something, you've already skipped ahead and you are onto that part anyway. And I don't have to worry that you were bored by any of that. So, okay, let's make some brackets that look like that. All right. So they are an inch and a quarter long. This is a three, three quarter channel. And uh, they're an inch and a quarter long. So the first thing I'll do is I'll cut, uh, I'll cut four of these at an inch and a quarter. And then once I get that set up, then we can uh, measure for where the holes are gonna be located, center punch those, and it's just kind of the normal process we uh, keep going through. So, inch and a quarter. There. 
just thinking about the direction I'm cutting these. Yeah, that works out good. Um, except I'd like it to be on the front side. Against the blade. Get the sled in here. got one punched here um, where it uh, needs to be drilled it gets 3 16 hole here and 3 16 hole through here and I will use this one as a template to drill the uh, drill the other ones uh, when I get this one um, all done so I'm gonna take these four and they just need a little just need to get a little bit of sanding on them just on these cut edges here uh, these cut edges here if I would show it to you, it'd be nice um, before I uh, move over to the drill press. So, all right, let's go sand these. get the uh, countersink out and we'll clean up the burrs on these holes. We'll have to get to the inside a little differently. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to clamp these together where they're flush and everything and then hold them down flat against the surface here and then I'm going to run my, uh, run my drill through and I'm going to make, just got to make a little adjustment here. Uh, want to make sure they're flush on this outer edge where I'm drilling the hole so then I'm just coming through both of these holes 
and I'm just making a, it's just basically like a center mark. Like so. And then all I gotta do is uh, take them apart, clamp them this way. And then I'll just do the same right here. And I've got my mark there. And I got my mark there. And we can move on to the next one. And we'll just do all, th do the other three that way, and then we'll have uh, four of them that match. All right, now that we got those, uh, got those drawn, I'm gonna radius them uh, using a, just using a Forstner bit. We're just gonna radius the this outside edge right here. like so you can see that so I get that on all of these And then we just get a uh, get a straight line from there. Down to the bottom here. To the eighth inch mark, so basically to here. And then that creates the uh, shape of our bracket. We use the uh, we're gonna use the bandsaw. We're gonna use the bandsaw to cut this because um, when you just sand this, like even on this corner right here, um, these get really hot. <laughs> they get hot in a hurry. So uh, I'll get I'll get as much off with the bandsaw as I can. And then I'm basically, in this case, I'm sanding pretty much to the outside of my line and where I have this kind of sharp edge. I'll just round that off so it's nice and transitions nice and smooth. Um, just needed a good guide to follow. All right, so after a little time on the uh, sander over there and then a little time with just some 220 sandpaper, um, this is what we get. We get four really nice little brackets, all the same, drilled the same, same shape. Um, 
and those are those are now ready to uh, ready to go to work um, on the uh, um, well basically they end up going end up going like here like so like that and then they connect to the tubes that hold up the keep the uh, vertical stab vertical so anyway that's all the time I have today but thanks for uh, hanging out with me and um, watching me uh, make some brackets to uh, move to the next step and uh, hey as always I will uh, I'll catch you later